Well, I, I'll start by saying I am tremendously excited to be uh, here at Rutgers to have this opportunity. Uh, I think there's so much potential here. It's such a great university. Uh, I've just in the last 48 hours meeting the people here. We've got some incredible people working in the athletic department. Uh, the enthusiasm already that I've seen for me is just its overwhelming. Uh, it's a little bit humbling because obviously there's tremendous responsibility. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do to compete in the Big Ten. That's going to require us to uh, get our facilities upgraded, to get, to get our fundraising going, um, get more fans coming in, get people to build sort of the, the culture of Rutgers that you see uh, in other Big Ten places around the country. And I, that's what New Jersey wants. I believe that that's what people are waiting for. So we're all hard at work already, and we're not going to stop until we get to the top. Sure. Pat, after, after a couple decades so deeply involved with Seton Hall, what's it like for you your first day to be down the road at the Bible? Well, I admit it's a little surreal. Um, and Saturday will be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to have uh, Seton Hall in the house. Uh, they're playing well. Uh, we want to beat them. Uh, I have a lot of friends at Seton Hall. I had a great time there. Uh, I think we did a lot of good things there. Uh, and now I'm just delighted to bring my efforts here to Rutgers, and uh, I'll be cheering very hard for the Scarlet Knights come Saturday. Sarge. Uh, typical AD, we'll have a list of coaches in, in their back pocket. I mean, do you have anything like that? Sure. Here you want to know. No, that wouldn't be fair to any of the candidates, and uh, uh, I'm just going to keep working hard. Um, obviously, I've been at that since uh, my appointment. And uh, so I hope to get you all uh, a new coach uh, as quickly as possible. And we can do this again uh, with a focus not on Pat Hobbs. Matt, you had mentioned yesterday, since this will be your first football hire, you're going to be uh, talking to uh, several different people to kind of help counsel. Do you care to share? Who? Sure. So uh, we're working with an outside consulting firm. I'm not going to mention the name of the firm. Uh, tremendous reputation. I've been spending a lot of time on the phone with them already. Uh, not surprisingly, I've got a few friends in the sports business right now who I, I trust their counsel on coaches. I've been getting all of that feedback, uh, and I'm going to continue to do that until we present you with the new head football coach. Thanks, Matt. Chief JP. Pat, uh, you, when you were at Seton Hall, there were certainly some, uh, some problems there that, uh, that you know, were taken care of. You were well aware of that, JP. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here, obviously, there have been some problems like that. I guess a twofold question. First of all, uh, you know, how much did you look into you know, some of the things that have gone on here that have gone wrong? And secondly, how much in terms of like, crisis management almost did going through what you went through and seeing all help you take that? Well, I'm, I don't want to talk really about like, so, you know, going back in the past. What I can say is uh, I view this as a very different situation here. Um, the base, the foundation that's here for us to build on to be competitive in the Big Ten is, is terrific. Uh, and I think the, you know, the outside, the outside uh, issues um, that we've been dealing with, uh, we can put in our past pretty quickly here. Uh, so it's not a kind of continuing situation. Uh, we're hard at work to make sure that um, you know, to the extent uh, there are questions that we have to answer, we answer those questions. Um, but uh, I've had the conversations uh, coming into this job. I'm very confident that we're going to be able to go forward with our programs uh, in a perfect position to be successful. We just need to bring them all the resources uh, and everything that they, they need in order to get to be competitive, which is where we need them to be. Thanks, JP. Bobby. I missed it in conference call. Um, I think you did make an offer yet. I know you're not going to reveal anything, but is there anything you can tell us on the coaching search, how it's going? Uh, there's nothing I can tell you about the coaching search. <laughs> it's, I can tell you it's going. You know, um, being able to recruit New Jersey is going to be really important. Uh, we have wonderful high school programs here, some of the best recruits in the nation, and uh, yes, they've been leaving the state. We want to stop that. We want to get more than our fair share uh, here in New Jersey. So um, if, the, if it's a head coach or an assistant coach and they have ties, that's great. It's a plus. But if they present, uh, if any of the candidates present a case for how they will turn the recruiting corner here in New Jersey, we're going to, be, we're going to listen to that. Pat, Ryan Dunleavy Hi. from Gannett. Uh, I saw in the letter that uh, Greg Brown and Ken Schmidt will be involved a little bit. Or yeah, they've been great. They're, they're very supportive. Yeah, had, did you know them at all? Had you ever crossed paths? And if not, what was your first impression of them? So I, I met uh, Greg for the first time on Tuesday. 
I was tremendously impressed with his passion for Rutgers, uh, passion for Rutgers University. I mean, he's enthusiastic about our sports. He wants to see our athletes succeed uh, and be given the best chance of succeeding. Um, but he's passionate about Rutgers, and so uh, his input uh, is terrific. Um, he, he bleeds uh, scarlet, and, and that's what we, you know, that's what you want here. Uh, and Ken is just a terrific guy. Uh, again, these are dedicated people. Uh, they they care about Rutgers. Um, they've they've had great success in life, and they're very busy people. Yet they continue to give back time to Rutgers. So uh, I'll take their counsel and the counsel of, of the other folks here at Rutgers. I met Ken this week as well. Yeah. I, know you said you I, I met I met President Barchi this week as well. <laughs> uh, you mentioned facilities. I know you're probably consumed with the coaching search. But just what are your thoughts on the facilities plans? We're we're not where we need to be. I uh, listen. Um, one of the things that I, it would be great if some of you folks would do is uh, go benchmark a little bit for us. Take a picture of some of the facilities that are out there in the Big Ten and compare them where we are right now. Uh, we're not where we need to be. So that's why you know, my first priority is going to be getting a head coach. My next priority is going to be fundraising, is getting out to the Rutgers faithful and those who care about Rutgers University and getting them to invest in our success. Because without that investment, we're not going to be successful. Have you had a chance to dive into the plan that's sort of in place already? I, I've, seen, I've seen the plan. Um, it looks terrific. Uh, I think I'm, I know we can get excitement about it. We get support for it. And Sarah and I, uh, we're going to be meeting tomorrow for a little bit on that. And uh, again, as soon as we get that coach in place, it's full tilt. Uh, yeah, I know you spent a lot of time at Seton Hall. It was a while until you retired there as a, a law school dean, and then you did some. I was on sabbatical. I was actually yeah, supposed yeah, to go yeah. back and teach. Um, I guess what inspired you, motivated you to take this job? This opportunity. There's no question about the opportunity at Rutgers. I and mean, I was enjoying the sabbatical, getting ready to go back into the classroom, uh, and uh, I actually was traveling, and uh, somebody uh, reached out to me and uh, said, uh, "Dr. Barchi uh, is interested in talking with you." And uh, as soon as we began the conversation, the excitement started to build. I, I think on both parts. Uh, I, I think when he heard uh, what I saw here, the potential that I saw here, and what I believe we can do. New Jersey's a special place. Uh, this is New Jersey's university. And uh, so that conversation just kept building and building where we both said, let's do this. I was just following up. How important was it for you to kind of ingratiate yourself with all the fans out there today? Oh, they, look, they're what it's all about, right? Um, so if you're gonna if you're gonna have that big time athletics, uh, you want to be out there. You want to be in the crowd. You want to see that they're they're excited about what you're doing. And I've got to meet with some of our students tonight. We need a lot more here on Saturday uh, for the Seton Hall game. Uh, getting up there with the band, um, those people. You know, you think about the dedication of all of them. They come out to our games. The band that's playing. Uh, the folks that have I, I met people who've been coming here for 30 years tonight. It's fantastic. Uh, and folks who used to come here, and we need to get them back again. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll greet anybody I can and say, keep coming to Rutgers basketball. Thanks, Jason. Ryan, yeah, Pat, when you met with President Barchi, did you go into it thinking it was like a job interview for a permanent AD job, or did you were you under the line that this is an interim? No, we, we started talking about it as a, as a sort of an interim possibility. Uh, and uh, the more we kept exploring it and, and what I thought about the opportunity and uh, what he thought I might be able to do, uh, you know, it, it, it turned. And, and then it was, you know, would you do this? And uh, I said, heck yeah, I'll do this. This is a great opportunity. So I, I should say, I, I have to say thank you, Dr. Barchi, uh, for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. Sam, uh, with this football hire, how quickly would you like to make this decision? And then what qualities are you looking for other than recruiting that you've already mentioned? So as expeditiously as possible, is that what I've been saying to everyone? Um, I want to make the right hire. I want to make the best hire we can for Rutgers University. Um, you know, we, uh, some folks might look at this and say, you know, that's a tough job. Um, there, there are needs there. Um, what we need to do is convince that the upside for our program uh, is there, and it is there. I mean, there, there are not a lot of Big Ten jobs, right? So uh, the opportunity to come and coach against some of the best in the country, uh, people should be interested in that. What they need to be able to do besides recruiting is they need to lead young men, right? Uh, academics is incredibly important to us. Integrity is going to be very important to us. Accountability is going to be very important to us. Um, they need to get the fans excited about Rutgers football again. Uh, and then ultimately, we, you know, it does come down to wins and losses. Uh, I'll probably keep asking for patience from our fans because I think our coaches are going to deserve that. 
particularly as we try to upgrade facilities and do the other things that are necessary. I think the coach has to be a great ambassador for the university, somebody who can stand side by side with me and the folks here in the uh, uh, athletic department uh, and convince people that they need to invest in Rutgers and Rutgers football. Dan, uh, you obviously have ties to Trenton. How, how do you think that will help you in this job? It never hurts to know our legislators and our governor uh, and the folks around the state. Uh, and, and that's another, another reason why this was attractive to me is because uh, people are enthusiastic. You know, you have Senators Cody and Lesniak sitting out there courtside right now. Uh, I got a chance to say hello to both of them. Uh, they're both going to be here on Saturday for a big in-state uh, in rivalry. Uh, so uh, I think it helps Rutgers. It certainly, you know, this is a state university. Um, we, uh, uh, we are... Um, we welcome the support from the legislature and from the governor, and anything I can do to get them uh, even more enthusiastic about Rutgers, uh, I think is a plus for Rutgers. GP. Uh, I guess, you know, again, just sorry to go back to the other you know, things that have happened here. Do you think, could some of that have been, I don't know how you, how you fix this going forward, because the pressures of, of being, of going to the Big Ten, and just what a, a big leap it was, I mean, how do you, you know, address that? I mean, now, how much you know will it take to succeed at, at the Big Ten level? Uh, it's a tremendous effort. It's, that's why we need a, a coach who is ready to work extremely hard uh, and puts together a staff that's ready ready to work extremely hard. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't want to look back. I don't want to comment on, on on what's happened in the past. Um, we have an opportunity to bring in a new leader for our football program. I'm really excited about that. Uh, I respect tremendously the dedication of Coach Flood and the de dedication of Julie Herman. Uh, I know how hard these jobs are. Uh, I know how many hours are spent off camera, off the field. Um, it's, uh, it's a tremendous investment of time. These are very stressful jobs. Uh, so I respect their dedication. And, and certainly, um, as somebody who now represents Rutgers, I thank them for their efforts. Jerry. Uh, as you worked the crowd tonight, whether it was a band or people sitting courtside, what was the common denominator or the feedback they gave to you? Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Um, and, and, you know, ex excitement. Um, look, they're part of this university. You talk, and those were the students. Uh, they chose to come here because they're going to get a great education at Rutgers University, a world-class education. And uh, they're here. They're in the arena tonight. They're here to cheer on our fans. Uh, what I, what I, what I want to see happen, what I would love to see happen, is that uh, we, we start to do things that other programs do. When our players come on the floor, uh, everybody should stand when our players arrive on the court. When our flyer, players leave the floor, everybody should stand. Uh, there should never be booing uh, of any player. Uh, these, these kids are out there, they're working very hard for Rutgers University. Uh, we should cheer them, success or fail. Team's back on the floor, so we'll take two more questions. Dan and Matt. The fans seem excited, but the one thing they might look at your background and say, no football. So how would you kind of comfort fans and say, how is this guy going to make football hire relegation? Yeah, so um, you know, no football, but I've made a lot of hires. Uh, and I've made hires where there's been a lot of pressure to make hires. And I, I, I'm confident I have very good people, people who were the right people at the right time uh, for Seton Hall. And um, so I'm confident. Uh, and, and look, I'm taking the advice, as I said, of as many people as I can. Um, and uh, look, all of you guys are out there in the media. Uh, you know the names that are being floated out there for all these various jobs. So it doesn't take long to put together a very long list. Uh, and then you start asking questions and you start winnowing and uh, saying, you know what, this could be somebody who could be really interesting and really good for Rutgers. Now let's get to talk to them. Uh, yesterday, Dr. Barch had mentioned finances aren't going to be an issue when it comes to hiring a new coach. But the last coach was one of the lowest paid uh, right. in, in the Power Five conferences. Do you have? A price range, and if so, I mean, obviously, you know, there's guys like Nick Saban, and then there's the lower end of the spectrum. What is your your price? Well, I got to negotiate, so I'm not going to give prices out there right now. The agents may be uh, re listening to this stuff. What I'll say to that is, uh, look, we're uh, we're still working our way into a full share of the Big Ten, right? That is not far away. Uh, the Big Ten will be renegotiating some rights contracts, and so that money may be even bigger. Um, and so. Um, you know, we can look forward at a five-year map out of our budget and know that um, we are going to be in very, very good financial shape. And that's what Dr. Barchi was referring to. And so that does put you in a position to have a little bit more flexibility in terms of what you're able to pay both the head coach and the pool for uh, the assistant coaches. Uh, so, you know, we'll work with that. That's a conversation that you have as you zero in on a candidate um, because 
you know, they, they, we want them to win. We want them to be as successful as they can. Um, but we're also a state university. We want to do this uh, in a way that uh, folks understand why we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I look forward to many conversations with all of you in the years ahead. Thank you.